Hey guys, so I wanted to talk to you real quick, do a little bit of a discussion about nitric oxide, inhaled nitric oxide therapy, and kind of what it's used for. So whenever we think about nitric oxide, I want us to also think about nitroglycerin. Sometimes you will know that we will give sublingual nitro tabs to patients who are experiencing heart attacks. It's a little tablet that they'll put underneath their tongue, and the whole point is to perform or induce coronary vasodilation, right? actual dilation of these vessels. Well, you also know that if you work in any kind of environment where you use nitroglycerin drips, again, this is primarily used in patients who have hypertension, and this is in order to produce systemic vasodilation. Again, we're just trying to dilate these blood vessels. Well, why would we use inhaled nitric oxide therapy? So this can be bled in through a high flow nasal cannula, or it can also be bled in through an actual uh, endotracheal tube through a ventilator. And the entire purpose is to dilate vessels, right? But specifically, what are we dilating? Well, as we inhale into our lungs, those are lungs, um, the point is to dilate these pulmonary arteries, pulmonary artery dial vasodilation. Now, this is used in patients who have pulmonary hypertension, and um, it's also used for patients who have severe right ventricular failure, okay? These are two instances in which you would see this therapy used. Now, What's the deal? Well, we same way that we have a blood pressure in our systemic vasculature, what we would call our blood pressure, we also have a separate blood pr pressure within our pulmonary arteries. This is called your pulmonary artery pressure, PAP. This is something that we use in the CVICU. And so whenever patients have increased pulmonary artery pressures, this is what they call pulmonary hypertension. Now, I want you to think about this like Whenever we talk about afterload, and we talk about that being the resistance by which our left ventricle has to contract against, stay with me. Same thing here with pulmonary hypertension. If you remember our anatomy, our right ventricle pumps blood up through our pulmonic semilunar valve into our pulmonary vasculature. So if we have pulmonary hypertension, this is essentially the RV's afterload, the afterload that our right ventricle has to pump against in order to get blood up into our pulmonary vessels so that that deoxygenated blood can then get oxygenated. So this becomes an issue for two reasons, right? If a patient has severe pulmonary hypertension, then we could end up uh, running into a form of hypoxemia, less blood actually being able to be pumped up into those pulmonary arteries because we have such severe pulmonary hypertension and therefore we have less oxygen rich blood being distributed to the rest of the tissues of our body. And on the other hand, the other issue that we end up running into is, again, patients who have RV failure. So if you have severe pulmonary hypertension, you have severe vasoconstriction of those pulmonary vessels, then that right ventricle is essentially pumping against a brick wall. And this leads to RV failure. This leads to heart failure. So I just wanted to do a quick little summary of what nitric oxide is, why we use inhaled nitric oxide therapies in the ICU. and how it can help patients who have severe pulmonary hypertension or have RV failure by again, dilating those pulmonary vessels, reducing the afterload by which our RV has to pump against and improving hypoxemia.